more analysis, let's speak now to Betul Doan Akash, who joins us live from the Turkish capital, Ankara. She's an assistant professor of Middle Eastern studies at Ankara University. Betul, we have heard a lot about Qatar's role in truce negotiations. What role have Saudi been playing? Um, thank you, Charlotte, for having me on the show. Um, so, in the side of on the side of Saudi Arabia, the key um, tool that they are running in their foreign policy making in terms of Gaza, they are using all sorts of institutional support. They are positioned in the UN, in the Arab League, uh, in the GCC. Um, we see Foreign Minister of uh, Saudi Arabia quite active in negotiating with the Arab parties. Um, there is definitely an institutional effort. Uh, from the side of foreign ministry and from the side of Saudi leadership. Um, but uh, the problem here, because Qatar is hosting Hamas and they are the one who is key in moderating or mediating between the parties, uh, we see more um, a leading approach from Qatar to reach a quick and rapid ceasefire. They are the one who is moderating mainly at the moment. But from Saudi Arabia, uh, what they could do more with this visit, maybe um, after uh, Blinken goes to Riyadh, um, we might have a further leadership role in uh, in a potential ceasefire because we don't see Mohammed bin Salman involving personally in the problem. We see an institutional response. These two are different because once you have more um, institutional response, it's important for international organizations for bringing more ministers together to reach a solution to discuss more aspects, especially in terms of humanitarian aid, etc. But if you have a leader of a country who is more into the process, who is putting his leadership, his personal effort in it, then we could see more maybe from the uh, from the Saudi side. So given what you've just said then, what do you think Blinken's goal is when he's in Saudi and do you think he'll be able to achieve it? So Saudi Arabia is um, one of the most important countries in the world, not only because of its um, oil sources or economic power, but also being a leader, one of the leaders of the Middle East community and um, Islamic society, because they are the protector of two holy sites in the world, which are specifically important for Muslims. And they are facing a problem with a state who is an occupier in the third holy zone in Jerusalem. So they are position with Blinken might be about bringing less um, disaster on the side of Jerusalem, because we know the, the main problem here is Gaza, but we know there is also attacks on the side of Jerusalem and West Bank. So this is the first one. The second role they can do now um, because they have a negotiating power and they have done this before, they have this foreign policy experience doing it for Palestinian resistance, they might um, push more for opening the border uh, to have more humanitarian aid uh, in the middle of Ramadan to Gaza. And as Blinken mentioned in his speech, entire population in Gaza is food insecure. And we might have uh, add on this the medicine, uh, the requirement of medicine and any other uh, sort of support the Gaza, po the population in Gaza. So we can have more humanitarian aid transaction after his visit. But the third aspect might be uh, having a, a tangible, maybe, uh, ceasefire draft, um, which is bringing more Saudi intervention to the case. We know it's more... Um, now conducted on the side of Qatari negotiation between Hamas and the Western powers. But we might have Saudi Arabia more because, as I mentioned, this, these are the special days for people in, um, in the Islamic world. And Saudi Arabia has the special status of being the protector of Holy Land. Uh, this soft power might be uh, materialized with a potential impact of this visit. And we can see more push uh, on the uh, transaction of humanitarian aid. And I think this will be important at least to reach a ceasefire until the end of uh, Eid celebrations or until the end of Ramadan. So we might see a tangible uh, outcome 
of this visit, uh, but not many scholars or regional experts are quite optimistic on that because this is not the first yeah. visit he has done to yeah, Middle East. Exactly, exactly, the sixth one. So perhaps wielding some some soft power there, the Saudis. And just briefly, if you would, Betel, before this conflict started, Israel and Saudi were kind of on the path to normalizing their relations. Where are they now and where does this deepening conflict leave those two countries, Israel and Saudi, in their bilateral relations? So, as we know, um, the normalization is not processed because of the uh, issues ongoing now between Israel and uh, people in Gaza. And we know that publicly, uh, the Saudi authorities, they said this is not now an issue on their table. So, in terms of foreign policy making, uh, not for any sort of pragmatic reasons or any sort of foreign policy strategy. Uh, I, I don't believe that now this is on their table to normalize with Israel. The priority at the moment is to keep this problem in the war in Gaza uh, and as soon as possible. And then maybe later on the stages to reach um, a further or long-term solution in Palestine. Saudi Arabia might involve more normalizing with Israel. But this is a situation where we have, let's say, Emirates and United Arab Emirates and Bahrain. They were normalizing states before, as you know, with Israel. But even in this condition, Bahrain canceled their normalization. They said they won't um, communicate on the diplomatic level with Israel until the end of the situation. Situation. So this is a tricky problem Yeah, because you don't have Saudis uh, in terms of uh, involving more with the, with the um, solution, uh, with the uh, with an outcome in Gaza, then how, how they are going to legitimize their involvement with Israeli parties. So there must be first a practical reason for them to involve more in terms of normalization. And second, they need a legitimacy for domestic politics and, and in terms of their international prestige to normalize with Israel. So I think it's a tricky issue yeah. right now. And put I think the, this is put on the back burner and sideline very much. Betel, I'm so sorry, we're going to have to move on. But thank you so much for coming on the programme. Betel Doan Akash.